Hello, today we're going to talk about blood, the different components that there are in the blood and what their jobs are. The first thing to remember is that blood is actually a tissue. A tissue, as you may remember from our video, is a group of cells working together, so blood classifies or can be counted as a tissue. If you were to look closely at this sample of blood, you would be able to see some of those different components. And they are pointed out here. So the first one is the liquid part of the blood, and that's called the plasma. So that's the liquid in which everything else is suspended. This is our red blood cell. And the reason why blood is red is because there are so many of those red blood cells. We have these larger cells, which are the white blood cells. And then we have these small cell fragments, which are called the platelets. Okay, and the way we describe blood is that we have these parts here that are suspended in the plasma. And by suspended, we actually mean that it, they, these parts don't float or sink, they just kind of hang in the, in the uh, liquid there. Okay, they're not dissolved or anything like that. Okay, so um, we could look at a bit more detail of what these different parts do. So here's our sample of blood, and what we could do is to separate out the different parts, we could spin this test tube very rapidly, and spinning it is the process carried out in a centrifuge, something called a centrifuge, and it looks a bit like this. So our test tubes sit in those little white containers and we can then spin that very quickly. Now this is a desktop one. The ones we would use for blood would actually be an electric one, a bit like a spin dryer, but this gives you the idea of what actually happens. So once we've spun that down, you will be able to see the different parts separated out. And we're gonna look in a little bit more detail at what the different parts do. Now it might be worth grabbing some notepaper or a flashcard. This would be ideal for a flashcard and setting it up a little bit like this. And we're gonna add some notes around what the different parts do. There are quite a few notes, so you might wanna wait till I've finished before you do your one. But either way, probably worth making a note of what we're about to talk about. I'm going to use this diagram, but yours doesn't need to be as complicated. So the first part we're gonna look at is the plasma, and the plasma is the watery or the liquid part of the blood. It is in fact mostly water, it's about 90% water. And what the plasma does is it carries the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and the platelets, as we've said before. But there are other roles as well. The plasma has the role of carrying a whole variety of important substances. So two examples of those would be hormones or antibodies antibodies play a role in defending the body and we're going to look at that in detail in a later video but we also have other solutes that are dissolved in the blood so solutes are things that are dissolved and they would include nutrients which come from our digested food and a common example of the nutrients is something like glucose or amino acids that have come from food that you have eaten it also transports other substances, carbon dioxide and urea, and both, and both of these are examples of waste products. Okay, so that's the plasma and the main roles for what it does. We have next our red blood cells. And the one single job that the red blood cells have is to carry oxygen. Red blood cells carry oxygen around the body. And the red blood cells have a bunch of adaptations to help them do this as effectively as possible. So the first one is that they contain a substance called hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a kind of protein and it's good at carrying oxygen. So they contain lots of hemoglobin. And when that hemoglobin combines with oxygen, it's called oxyhemoglobin. When it drops off the oxygen, again, it turns back to hemoglobin. We also have the fact that they are very small and because they're very small, they are able to pass through the tiny blood vessels called capillaries and get very close to the respiring cells or the body cells that need the oxygen or the nutrients. The other adaptation is the shape and we call it a biconcave shape or they're sometimes called biconcave discs. That means they're kind of pressed in from each side and that achieves the effect of giving a high surface area to volume ratio and that is very useful because more oxygen can be absorbed into those red blood cells into the hemoglobin. They also are the only type of cell that have no nucleus in the body 
and that means there is more space to carry more hemoglobin and therefore more oxygen. Okay, so these are the adaptations and when you're describing adaptations, it's important that you use linking words like so more oxygen is carried. And we've used it over here as well. We said very small so they can pass through capillaries. So that's a way of making sure you're describing how the adaptation is useful. Okay, so the next one we're going to look at is the white blood cell or white blood cells, and they have a couple of useful adaptations as well. You can see firstly that, that they are a different shape totally to the red blood cells. They are more, the red blood cells are more of a disc shape. And the white blood cells have a role of defending against what we call pathogens, defending against disease, and disease is caused by types of microorganisms called pathogens. Any microbe that causes a disease is a pathogen and again we'll look at that in more detail in a later video. One of the first adaptations for our white blood cell, so we've got adaptations, one of the first ones and the main one is the fact that they can change their shape quite easily. They have quite a fluid structure so it's easy for them to change shape and that change in shape is really useful because one it allows them to leave the blood capillaries, they can squeeze out of blood capillaries and go and deal with any microbes that are causing a problem. And in one of the ways they do that is they engulf the microbes. So they kind of swallow them up and having that fluid structure allows them to do that quite easily. So that's our white blood cells. And next we're gonna look at our platelets. The platelets are shown as these kind of yellowy structures there and they are tiny cell fragments. They're not actually individual cells by themselves, just fragments of cells. And their main role is helping to recover when you have either scratched or cut yourself. So what they do is they help the blood to clot. So if you've got a scratch or a cut, the blood will clot in that area and prov uh, provide a barrier to stop anything else, any other kind of microbes or something like that getting in. So platelets help blood to clot uh, so they can block wounds and protect from further infection. Okay, so this is basically the roles of the different components of the blood. I just noticed the platelets should be in blue there, same as everything else. But there we have it. That's the summary of what we need to know about the blood. And if you waited to add your notes to your flashcard or your revision sheet, you can go ahead and do that now. There's nothing more to add. Your revision card might look a little something like this. So we've got our blood in the middle. We don't need our complicated diagram as we had on my sheets, but uh, you might want to do a little diagram of each of the types of blood cell because your specification does say that you need to be able to recognize the blood cells from, the di from diagrams or photographs. So it might be worth adding those. But other than that, that would make a nice neat revision card for you to revise near the exam or if you forget the main parts. But that's us pretty much done. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.